Quantum computers are outstanding masterpieces of science and engineering. In the future, they will be able to solve certain computational challenges that are unsolvable today. Making quantum computers a reality takes brilliant people with deep knowledge and diverse skills. And our team has exactly that. Qubits form the brain of a superconducting quantum computer. The qubit chips look similar to conventional computer chips, but the qubits act quantum mechanically when they're cooled to temperatures near absolute zero. But making these qubits is no easy task. On one hand, qubits must be extremely well isolated from their environment to allow superposition states. In other words, Putting a qubit into a superposition state is only possible if nothing else in the universe knows what state the qubit is in. At the same time, the qubits must interact with each other in a very controlled and strong manner. Designing and manufacturing these qubits that are stable, controllable and able to interact with each other is the first step in the quest to build a quantum computer. To do that, we need a wide range of expertise. We need material science, we need cryogenic electrical characterization, we need conventional microwave circuit design, and we even need quantum mechanical pen and paper theory. And we of course also need expertise in manufacturing techniques uh, in the clean room and also in packaging. A clean room is a controlled environment with a very low concentration of pollutants such as dust or other airborne particles. There we fabricated the combination of layers needed to create the superconducting elements and connections that make up a superconducting quantum processor. This is done by depositing different materials with specific properties and functions onto a silicon wafer. We then use lithographic techniques adapted from the semiconductor industry to transfer the desired patterns onto the layers on the wafer. The main challenge is to find superconducting materials that sustain quantum effects for as long as possible. Once the team has succeeded in manufacturing qubits, it is time to plan and build the system architecture that houses the brains of the quantum computer. Achieving quantum behavior requires extremely low temperatures. That's why the quantum processor unit is housed in what in essence is a very fancy refrigerator. A cryostat provides and maintains these low temperatures. It's assembled into a canister that resembles a thermos flask. A set of metal shells are nested inside one another creating insulated vacuum chambers that are cooled using a helium mix. The quantum chip is mounted in the cryostat where it's protected from interference. Once the entire system has been designed and built, it's time to make sure it is usable. This is done during the calibration and benchmarking stage. Yeah, so this stage is really about setting up and configuring the system for optimal use of the quantum computer. First, we need to locate the qubits to be able to drive them. Think of finding Waldo on the map. The next stage is to calibrate the two qubit operations which are needed by quantum algorithms. To do that, we must set the driving frequency of each qubit such that we can control the interactions between them. Once that's done, the system can be tuned up, where we turn a good system into an excellent one. The success of this tune-up can be measured through systematic benchmarking of the device. And the result? A state-of-the-art quantum computer that can be used to gain insight into how future quantum computers can tackle extremely complex problems. At VTT, we develop technologies to scale up quantum computers. We are the home of extraordinary people and technologies, ready to make an impact together.